The anime begins with a girl named Nishino, who wakes up murmuring. She opens the door and gets a flashback of her scary past. She gets terrified and stops with a jerk, but it is her driver outside. He drops her at school in a luxurious car, and everyone admires her for her beauty, except for Keijnu. All notice her when she enters the school. Nishino comes closer to him and says hello, but she doesn't like him very much, because he always gets a lower middle grade in school. He mispronounces her name every time and doesn't even recognize her. However, she is tired of mentioning her name. But Keiju doesn't even see her when talking, and put his eyes on something else. She tries hard to ignore him, but for some reason she cannot. In the next scene, she is telling her past. She left her career and studies lately because of a scandal. She limited herself to a room and started putting on a mask in public. When school ends, she calls her driver, but he doesn't pick up. Some stray boys have killed him. After waiting for a long she decides to walk home alone. This is the first time she is ever walking in the streets. She encounters the identical stray boys, who abduct her in a dark street. They put her in chains to get money from her wealthy father. Keiju sees all this from a distance, but he doesn't move ahead a bit to help her during the abduction. Nishino sees Keijnu standing at a distance until the last possible sight when she was given anesthesia. They put her in a dark room, and one of the kidnappers tries to kiss her and button down her clothes. It is also revealed that it is the second time she has been kidnapped. In the meantime, a boy in a fully covered green costume hits up through a glass ceiling, and introduces himself as stylish thug slayer. He possesses remarkable marksman skills and knows all about fighting without making noise. The kidnappers get scared but still challenge him to fight. One is defeated in only one go, and the other seems challenging to handle. He is the ex-soldier, but the boy is very confident in his skills. He insults the soldier's poor skills and arrogant behavior. He aggressively tries to hit him, but the boy breaks his bones with a barrel and reveals his identity. He is one ski mask berserker, who walloped the biker gangs with one barrel. The soldier recognizes him. The boy strengthens his belief and hit him with the barrel. Also, he fails his attempts to hold a gun by throwing the barrel directly at his other arm. Both arms are broken and then he hit him with multiple strikes in the abdomen and smashes his head. He is all covered, that's why Nishuni doesn't recognize him. But he is her classmate whom she dislikes. He set her free from chains and advises her not to walk home alone next time. He disappears before Nishuni could see him and mourns at his performance with the soldier. He is unsatisfied with his fight, because his fighting skills differ from eminence and shadows. After that, Nishino reports the police about the event and informs her father. They took all measures so that the case would not go public. However, she is still sad, because the identity of stylish thug slayer is still a mystery. The following day, she greets all the students like before, and Keijnu is still ignoring her. However, he spells her name accurately and establishes eye contact so far. Nishino is gloomy to see Keijnu sad all the time, because she knows he lives a masked life just like her. This makes her even sadder. In the next scene, a horrifying news spreads all over the city that a student from middle school was run over by a truck and died last night. The student's name is Keijnu, and the accident is caused due to the rash driving of the truck driver. The scene switches to a young boy who is all alone and striving to make his childhood dreams come true. Like most children, he still remembers his childhood dreams and cannot let them fade with time. He wants to live that dreams and get more and more power. That's why he does everything to make them come true. All these powers would fade away from joining small combats to soldiers training, even winning wrestling competitions. He even tried joining all these combats. The reason is that all humans are helpless to any natural calamity and even a nuclear bomb. He wants to live an enduring life where no eradication of energies takes place. For this, he had to eradicate whatever it takes and is willing to eliminate everything. Therefore, he is bound to spend a mediocre lifestyle in front of the whole world. But he do all heroic deeds and shadow to achieve whatever he wants. Finally, he achieves that aim, creates a group of heroes, and becomes the Eminence in Shadows. Keiju always wanted to be the master of Eminence in Shadows, and now he is one of them. He is telling the same story. He is the middle school mediocre stylish thug slayer boy, who died in a truck accident. And now, he is reborn as the son of Baron Keijnu. When he is reborn, his mother notices his delayed cry and wants him to cry. After hearing that he cries out that loud and everyone gets annoyed, they notice something strange in their newborn baby. 
He is born in a family where his elder sister is a pro in the combination of several martial arts skills. Since childhood, he is continuously learning these skills. For generations, this family has been practicing magic and pumping dark nights. They all have high hopes for Keganu, but he is always a mediocre and ordinary trainer of character A. However, in the shadows and dark, he is pro in martial arts skills and has been killing people like vegetables. He gets the slime swords, which are much more interesting than he thought. He kills a group of people in a single attack. He robs art, food and a lot of wealth from a caravan by using his super slimy bodysuit. His suit contains a lot of powers from pointed fingers to several kinds of traps. He notices a cage where a corpse is half alive and is trying to escape it. This unpredictable corpse is throwing waves of energy similar to him and he absorbs them. This is neither a corpse nor a human, which means it is possessed, and he starts experimenting for about a month. He can do whatever he wants with it. He finally succeeds in containing the magical overload, and the consequences are unexpected. This turns into a beautiful girl, who is unconscious and naked. It is unbelievable that something dead could revert to its original. Anyhow, he is pleased that it is his first success as an eminence in shadow. He breaks the curse that had tightened her as a living corpse for a long time and elaborates on the truth. In history, a demon cast his curse on different heroes at his last breath, and someone twisted the curse and changed all of them into a lump of flesh. These heroes defeated demon in the past, and the devils who turned them into corpses is named the Cult of Diablos. These devils are a group of zealots plotting to revive the demon who cursed them. They never come in the daylight and do their acts only in the dark. The girl gets super aggressive and wants to take an act of revenge for her curse. Keiju is on the same mission to work in shadows, stop the devil's movements, and prevent them from reviving the devil. Keiju changes his name to Shadow and invites her to join his mission to kill the cult of Diablos. The girl is named Alpha by him after joining the mission. Also, she lost everything since the curse years, and now the only task of his life is to take revenge. She was bound to waste her future as a hideous beast. But Keijnu saved her life, that's why she offers her life for him. Keijnu offers her the powerful slimy suit and welcomes her to the team. The girl asks to find other descendants and revive their souls into original. She suggests to offer them to join the team and expand this organization to increase the winning chances. Hearing this, Keijnu agrees. They names the team Shadow Garden. Besides creating the team, he is now turned 16 and practicing Dark Knight likewise. In the past few years, he has optimized all types of martial arts, but he can only use some of them here in practice with his older sister. He intentionally loses the practice all the time to give the impression of being a weaker one and restores his energies. His sister thinks that he never made progress during all these years. He is playing the background character, an ideal to be ready for the day of the final battle. Today the farewell party of his sister is going to be held in the house and she leaves for it. She will attend the Midget Academy for Dark Knights in the Royal Capital, and the guests are there to congratulate her on this success. However, on the day of her departure, she goes missing from her room. Her parents freaks out to know that she got defeated by some scoundrel. Her mother orders everyone to find her. Keiju asks a member of his team to collect all members of Shadow Garden. They will all find his sister and collect details regarding the kidnapper. Somehow, the kidnapper could belong to the cult of Diablos. His sister is perhaps one of the hero's descendants, and the devils don't want her to join the academy. They are determining the hideouts where they keep his sister, but Keijnu already distinguishes it. He points out the place on the map, and there is a shadow hideout and nothing else. On the other hand, his sister is imprisoned and chained in a dark place. The kidnapper knows all about her family, and she mentions her brother. She says that even though her brother always loses the fight with her, but she still learned much from him instead of her father. He also mentions that when the curse possessed her, Keijnu was the one who saved her from the possession and revived her soul. This confirms that she belongs to one of the heroes of Descendants. The kidnapper is excited to see her brother and threatens to kill him. By listening to her brother's killing, she gets enraged and breaks the chains. She goes back to her home with slight injuries. While on the other hand, Keijnu with his team reaches there and infuriates the kidnapper. A ferocious fight starts among them, and he gets poorly injured. After analyzing their strength, he engulfs a pill that gives him ultimate powers. He turns red and attacks them. But even this pill could not do much and he sneaks out with fear. On his way, Keijnu is already waiting for him. He underestimates him by seeing him alone and starts showing his magical powers. But Keijnu is a tough competitor and insults his magical powers. Because his lunge is weak and he doesn't even know how to use these powers. He is teaching him lessons about using these powers in the best way. And meanwhile surviving his attacks. In lesson number 3, he attacks his stomach and tear up his body. 
Instead of being injured, the kidnapper changes into a more powerful being and turns his body into an animal. Still, Keijnu is not worried and faces this situation so intelligently that the kidnapper is defeated. He is dead, and a pendant from his neck spills out with a picture of a girl. Keijru holds the pendant and leaves. He is pleased that their rescue mission is complete. Although his sister freed herself before their arrival, and didn't know about the natural strengths of her brother, she is tenacious, and all her injuries get resolved even in one night. She leaves the following day pretending as if nothing happened. Keijnu wishes to go to the capital. He wonders that after leaving, he will put Alpha in the lead and hand her the work. The time has come to leave the place, and he says goodbye. He imagines Alpha and other teen girls, who had collected much information about the devils the last time. They believe that the Cult of Diablos is an enormous organization that runs globally. H finds it exciting and still wishes to strive for eminence in shadows till his last breath. In the next scene, an insane boy is hitting his head against a stone and jumping in front of a train. On the hand, Keijnu has reached the destination and wishes the best of luck to the girls of Shadow Garden. At the age of 15, he enrolls in the same school as his sister. This is a super prestigious school for all inside and outside the kingdom. It is a medieval tile hierarchical community. And still, he manages to get in there instead of having background character in the outside world. He is now treated as a mediocre background character and placed lower in dorms and buses. This teases him, and he wishes to be in the upper dorms just like his sister. For this, he has to become champion at the Bush Inn Festival. They discuss a penalty for yesterday's test, which is to confess love to the most beautiful lady in the school. However, this never turns out to be beautiful, because he has to face the brutal rejection by her in front of the whole school. His mates expect to honor his said words and perform the penalty. He travels in a full-stuffed bus meant for the background characters, and spends most of the time with these losers. They reach the school, where a boy was proposing to the goddess of the campus. He gets insulted, when she brutally rejects his proposal in front of the school. Indeed, she belongs to a political family and wants to marry a wealthy political boy after graduation. Keijnu's mates ask him not to lose hope after this incident. However, he is much more confident. He, with a shivering voice and in a super mediocre way, confesses her love for the same girl. He was sure he would get a horrible rejection. But her eyes widened when he hears yes from the most beautiful girl on campus. Everyone is amazed to see this miracle, how character is dating the goddess of the campus. Her name is Alexia. The boys are jealous, and the girls are amazed. Everyone is wondering how she can say yes to his proposal. Even he was also not expecting this. In the cafeteria, Cajunus mates are discussing this super bizarre thing and mourning about losing their chance. Suddenly, she comes nearby and asks to join them. They are all jaw-dropping surprised and start stuttering. A gossip all over the atmosphere of the cafeteria arises as she is sitting in the lower nobility seats for the first time. The royal food is served, but she wants to try the ordinary one. Cajunu gulps all her royal food and enjoys it. She also wants to join Section 9, which is the lowest one in the school. Keijnu agrees and they both are in the same section now. The princess also makes him join the traditional Bushin Section 1, and the instructor welcomes him. They are excited to see his powers as a background character. He fights with the princess and analyzes that she has slow movements. She doesn't use magic and violates the basic rules of matching each other's powers in this practice. She later copies his stretches and doesn't review their strokes and counter-strikes. She is super plain, although her plainness is the result of so much effort, and she has practiced a lot to achieve this. She also mentions his sister, who is now one of the strongest warriors in the Drac Knights. After the fight, the princess hates his style as he is not doing but copying her. The instructor asks for her final decision about dating him. She agrees and the instructor laughs at that. She reveals that the instructor is the one who wants to get engaged to her, and she accepts Keijnu's proposal to avoid this engagement. Keijnu refuses to help her and wishes not to attract the whole school's attention. Princess also states that she has accepted his proposal, because she doesn't want to lose the bet with her friends. She bet with them lastly that if she did not confess fake love, she would make every day in this academy trouble for them. Now he has to act fake love in front of the whole school to live peacefully. He has no choice but to accept the offer, and he can stop right after the instructor loses interest in the princess. Keijnu is not interested and looks whiny, because he knows he will not give up that earlier. Keijnu doesn't see the ending well, but she ensures that she is responsible for whatever the conclusion is. She tosses a shining coin and drops it on the floor. He asks if she find him that greedy. She replies, yes Keijnu jumps over the coin to hold it and says that you're right. She tosses another coin and he picks it up from his mouth. She considers him a good doggy and tosses another one. 
They spend the next day together as boyfriend-girlfriend. The whole school calls Keijnu a gold digger. The princess considers the instructor infuriating because he is arrogant about his sword skills. That's why she doesn't like him. Princess is very prudent in public, but in actuality, she is a whirlwind of insults and spite. Keijnu always agrees with her point, because debating with her about anything is useless. They are having a conversation while eating ice cream. Keiju asks about the problem with marrying the instructor, as he has the status, power, fame, and everything to make her happy. But she even hates his existence and his perfectness. She likes a person who is real inside and outside, even an average with a mediocre lifestyle. She gives him a coin again as a reward for agreeing with her argument. While traveling on the bus, she discusses their lives. The princess tells him everything he thinks of him, and she sees him as mysterious. Keijnu asks about her dull behavior today. She then tells him that she always wanted to be as strong as her sister Iris. But even though she tried her best, she could not beat and turned her way out. She finds her way to become strong and looks where she is now. Everybody calls her a fencer ordinaire. She thinks that Cajunus fencing style is as ordinary as hers. That's the thing she likes in him. She thinks of it as unfortunate, but Cajunu term it fortunate and tells her that he likes her fencing style. She tells him that her sister said the same thing to her when she lost the Bushin festival last time. It was so sad feeling for her at that time. However, he ensures her that he likes her fencing style because he feels just like her. She points a sword at him, but he doesn't reply. After this, she leaves the bus. He thinks that this is the end of this unwanted relationship. Keijnu's friend asks him if he has dated the princess for two weeks. He refuses and they curse him for losing the golden chance. In the meantime, they hit the instructor. He asks for the princess because she has been missing since last night and Keijnu was the last person she contacted. Now, he is in big trouble. Everyone there is holding on to their swords and ready to kill him at merely one command by the instructor. He instantly surrenders in front of the crews and bows down on his knees. We see the princess is in charge of an evil doctor who calls its blood royal. A demonic creature with one bloody eye and a large hump is in chains nearby. The doctor comes nearby and takes out the blood of the princess. On the other hand, Keiju is tied with ropes and schoolboys are torturing him. They think that he has kidnapped the princess, so they are asking for her. But he knows nothing and says no to every asked question. They stab nails into his thighs and he screams for his life. The doctor takes out the blood continuously and suddenly becomes insane by remembering his devastating past. Some idiots ruined his laboratory where his science experiment was about to complete. He turns crazy and starts hitting the nearby demonic creature. The princess is not scared but calm. She asks him to complete his odd experiment with her blood. The school authorities are anxiously investigating the kidnapping. They all think that Keiju is responsible for her kidnapping because he was the last person seen with her. The authority is also a princess and she is Alexia's sister. Keijnu's sister reaches there and asks for his brother. She wants to save him from those cruel school boys. Although Alexia and her sister used to be very friendly, but now they never talk to each other. She remembers their old memories. Keijnu is set free because no allegations go against him. He meets a suspicious girl on the way home and she is Alpha. She is present at his apartment and already waiting for him with food. She heard that Keijnu is in trouble, so she is here to see him. She informs him that the eminence of shadows is working well, and they have enhanced their abilities recently. They are also investigating a lot about the cult. She informs him that it is the cult who has kidnapped the princess, because they always crave royal blood. She also asks permission to dispose of the boys who investigated him. He refuses to harm them anyway and appreciates their dedication to their work. The princess is in awful condition and syringes are all over her body. She is half awake and half asleep. Keijnu is at a place where he admires all antique items and puts a letter there as a final touch. He is actually in the royal capital. He states that he had done all those things. A fake relationship with the princess was searching for the eminence of shadows. Now he has to wait. The time has come, Delta enters, and he informs her that the night of shadow has come. They plan to launch attacks on all the Fenrir sect hideouts simultaneously. The Diablo's cult will scatter throughout the capital and search for traces of the princess's Alexia magic. She is narrating the whole plan of the eminence of shadows, and he decides to prelude. Tonight the world would know them. Two schoolboys from the investigating team hit him in the street, and he kills them with his superpowers. Keijnu says that till sunlight, this would all be finished. Delta is taking notes of all this. He destroys several places in the city, and the whole battalion is in action now to figure it out. The princess of the school orders all boys to take immediate action to find the suspect. 
On the other hand, the doctor injects a devastating prototype into the demonic creature. It changes into a colossal devil, and it kills the doctor. The creature breaks all the chains, and the princess is set free. The devil monster moves into the city and scares the whole public. Princess Alexa is trying to return, and he finds a boy from the school. He funded the doctor for research and is involved in her kidnapping. With the princess's blood and the doctor's research, he can get the 12th seed in the rounds. Rounds are the 12 highest ranking knights in the order, which means knights of the rounds. He would be the highest rank among them, and it would bring money and fame. He talks about harming her sister. He is the same boy in the school's authorities, who had been handling the investigation of the kidnapping case of Alexia. She is super aggressive and attacks him with a sword. He counterattacks and insults her ordinary powers. After several flips and tricks, he defeats her and makes her bow down on her knees. Suddenly, they hear footsteps. It is Cage Nu in his pure black attire of eminence of shadows. After this episode ends, watch the video of the left side if you have missed the previous video, and subscribe to Annie Summary for more anime recaps.